Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. In this video, we are reviewing every amlactin lotion, everything from the 5% lactic acid up to the 15%. We're gonna go over the different ingredients. And by the end of the video, hopefully you'll have some sense based off of this review of which one might be right for you. So first of all, let's talk about lactic acid because that's really the hero ingredient behind amlactin products. Lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid or AHA. It exfoliates the skin, but it also acts as a humectant, meaning it helps to draw moisture up in the outermost layers, keeping the skin hydrated. Ultimately, that bodes well for better barrier function and better epidermal turnover, smoother, plumper, more hydrated skin, and better barrier integrity. It's a great ingredient for softening rough skin texture, smoothing keratosis pilaris, and improving dull or dry skin. Technically, these lotions use ammonium lactate, the salt of lactic acid. It functions pretty much the same, it's still hydrating, it still can exfoliate, but it is a more stable ingredient, we'll say, for overall formulation purposes. In a moisturizer, what does lactic acid do? It helps loosen up built up dead skin cells, smoothing the skin surface, and ultimately helps the skin stay moisturized. And the results, they speak for themselves because amlactin lotions have a loyal following. But before we go product by product, let's talk a little bit about why the percentage strength of lactic acid makes a difference. At 5% lactic acid strength, you're getting hydration and very mild, gentle exfoliation. Great for beginners, great for sensitive skin. At 12% strength and above, we start to see impressive benefits, not just in the topmost layers of the skin, but in the deeper layers, the dermis. 12% strength and higher of lactic acid can lead to an improvement in both epidermal and dermal thickness with ongoing continued use. What does that mean? Not only more moisturized skin, smoother skin, but you start to get an improvement in skin thickness, potentially reversing atrophy, improving collagen production, and improving wrinkle depth, helping to rejuvenate aging skin. The skin looks smoother and healthier long-term. The trade-off with 12% shrinks and higher is that they can sting. They might be too irritating, especially in delicate areas like your neck, facial skin. And for children, 12% and higher can be a little bit too much for their delicate skin. They're especially irritating if you have just shaved if you have a cut, a paper cut, or if you are in the midst of an active eczema flare-up, the skin is raw and weepy, ouch. Lactic acid can definitely be spicy. While the higher percentages of lactic acid might end up being too much on the face, it's not to say that they are off the table. In fact, Amlactin has even updated their website under the frequently asked questions, something to the effect of what I would tell anyone. It is more likely to be irritating at these higher strengths on the face. Some people tolerate it. And therefore, I recommend, as do they on their website, doing a small patch test on the face to see how you tolerate it, if that's something that you're interested in doing. Two more really important reminders, though. Because lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid, it can make your skin more susceptible to a sunburn. So you want to be really careful that you are protecting your skin in the sun. Even when it's mostly cloudy outdoors, we should be protecting our skin from the sun year round. But you want to be extra precautious when you use an alpha hydroxy acid, as it can make you more susceptible susceptible to a sunburn. The other thing I want to point out is that lactic acid as an ingredient, it kind of has this milky aroma. Amlactin as a brand, they do not add fragrance to their products in order to mask that odor, which I appreciate because fragrance, especially for people with atopic dermatitis, a type of eczema, is a common allergen in skincare products and can just cause a lot of issues for them. So I think that's great. However, some people are like, ugh, this smells off-putting. I will point point out that the aroma, which to me is just a mild milky aroma, it does not last on the skin. It dissipates very quickly. But when you're putting it on your face, it's something that some people can't stand. While it has a milky aroma, the ammonium lactate is plant derived from corn fermentation. It's not sourced from dairy. All right, so with that background, let's go through each of the different lotions. Now they also have a variety of creams and I think they have foot creams, hand creams. We're just focused on the body lotions today. First up is Amlactin's Daily Nourish with 5% lactic acid. This is one of the more gentle formulations as far as the strength of the lactic acid. The exfoliation is gonna be mild, it's gonna be gradual, but with ongoing use, it's still enough to smooth the skin surface and help support softer skin long-term. Less likely to sting in comparison to the higher percentage products. And it also may be one that you're more inclined to try on your face, less likely to be irritating, and therefore you can derive those benefits of improved moisture content, gentle exfoliation, 
smoother skin, helping to address dry, rough, and or textured skin. This particular lotion has some great additional supporting ingredients that are specifically aimed at the needs of the moisture barrier, namely ceramides, which are lipids naturally found in everyone's skin, and applying them in a lotion or a cream topically can actually help your skin say, hey, let's get back on track with making these lipids so the skin barrier is in better working condition. This product also has niacinamide, a B vitamin that is an antioxidant and can help with the skin barrier. As a side note, people talk a lot online about the skin barrier. This product's great for the skin barrier. This product quenches the skin barrier. This is what you need if you have an impaired skin barrier. If you find all of that confusing, you don't know how to make sense of what they're saying, you definitely want to check out yesterday's video from me where we talk all things skin barrier. So if you want more information on the skin barrier and warning signs that you have an impaired skin barrier, that is a video to watch. This also has vitamin D and vitamin E. Vitamin E is another antioxidant. Vitamin D applied topically has anti-inflammatory benefits and can be particularly helpful in reinforcing the skin barrier. If you've never used an alpha hydroxy acid before or your skin is particularly sensitive, this would be a reasonable one to consider if you want to try something that is both going to hydrate and very gently exfoliate the outermost layers of the skin. I believe a child could use this, no problem. However, do know that children are more likely to have the burning and stinging with lactic acid. Everyone will vary in that regard, but generally speaking, this is one that a child could use. Moving on, let's talk about Amlactin's Daily Nourish 12% Lactic Acid. This is probably the one I recommend the most across all of my videos. At 12% strength, you are getting noticeable exfoliation. This level is great for keratosis pilaris, aka chicken skin, rough and bumpy skin, strawberry skin. It's wonderful for chronically dry or flaky patches, and just for our overall restoring the smoothness of rough skin. And as I mentioned earlier, lactic acid at 12% or higher strength has been shown to improve both epidermal and dermal thickness. Now, this particular product does not have niacinamide, and nor does it have the ceramides, but the ammonium lactate alone in this formula does a lot to hydrate, to moisturize, to smooth, to plump, to firm, to rejuvenate the look of aging skin, to help improve the appearance of sun damage. This, this right here is a top recommendation. The downside, of course, is that 12% is more likely to sting. So if you're in the midst of an eczema flare-up, you have raw, irritated skin, skin you've been scratching, or you just shaved, be aware that if you put this on that skin, it is spicy. You will get an uncomfortable, tingling, burning sensation. Now, this is one that can be used on the face, but is just more likely to be irritating, especially to delicate eyelid skin, and is more likely to be irritating as well to delicate neck skin. That's not to say it's off the table, you can't use it there. Do a patch test first to see how you tolerate it. Overall though, this one might be a little bit too much for young children to tolerate, especially those with atopic dermatitis in the midst of a flare-up. Whew, this might evoke tears. Okay, moving on to the Amlactin Intensive Healing 15% AHA Lotion. This is the highest percentage of lactic acid among all of these lactic acid containing lotions. That being said, it doesn't really feel spicier, stronger in comparison to the 12%. I really honestly don't think that that is a huge difference as far as the strength. In other words, there's not a marked difference in how much exfoliating you're getting from the 12 to the 15% as far as the overall performance. It's really not a huge difference. It also has ceramides though, unlike the 12%, but in contrast to the 5%, which has ceramides, no niacinamide. Some of you guys don't get along with niacinamide. While it's a great ingredient, it, it, you know, some people find that it burns and stings, irritates the skin. So this one is niacinamide free. Like the 12% daily, if you apply it to skin after you've shaved or if you have any little open areas, areas you've been scratching a lot, this will sting. It may be more likely to be irritating on the face, so patch test first. Probably too much for a young child. It is more likely to sting. This is a great option though if you have very thick, chronically dry skin, like on the elbows or the knees. Dry, thickened, discolored skin is what we refer to as like henification, and you really need intense moisturization coupled with alpha hydroxy acids to hydrate and exfoliate away that dry, rough skin texture. This can be amazing. Also wonderful on the feet for dry, rough callus. Let's talk about the Amlactin Daily Vitamin C Lotion with 7% lactic acid. 7% is moderate strength, but again, 
again, honestly, it's not a huge difference from 5% in the other product. It may be a bit more likely to sting compared to that, but overall, I wouldn't get too focused on 5% versus 7%, just like I wouldn't get too focused on 12% versus 15%. It's really not a huge difference in the long run. But the marketing around this, of course, has to do with vitamin C because vitamin C is a top seller. And if you're a skincare brand, there is tremendous pressure to work in vitamin C somewhere in your storyline and your product lineup to offer something with vitamin C because the search volume for vitamin C containing products is so high, you want somebody to land on your page. So inevitably, you are going to create a product that is centered around vitamin C. And here we have it from Amlactin. When it comes to vitamin C, however, it is a category of skincare ingredients, specifically ascorbic acid. That's the top dog. That's the one that's been shown to improve collagen production, to improve hyperpigmentation. That's the one that has the most data behind it. However, it's a tricky ingredient to formulate with due to issues around its stability and poor penetration into the skin. So therefore, you have this outgrowth of all of these vitamin C derivatives that have different modifications on them in an effort to overcome the limitations that ascorbic acid has. The form of vitamin C used in this product is aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate. This is a water-soluble vitamin C derivative. It's basically a combination of pure L-ascorbic acid and a molecule called 3-aminopropyl dehydrogen phosphate, which is supposed to make the vitamin C more stable. Like most vitamin C derivatives, it likely offers some benefit as far as an antioxidant, reducing the overall burden of free radicals, oxidative stress, and it may potentially help with improving discoloration. But I do want to point out that there aren't extensive studies on this particular form of vitamin C. In other words, the exact level of effectiveness is unclear. One thing that is well supported in this formula, the workhorse of the skincare industry, bringing it back again to niacinamide. Niacinamide is a great ingredient for brightening and discoloration. It has a pretty good track record in that regard. It helps to slow down the transfer of pigment packets from the pigment producing cells and melanocytes to the surrounding skin cells. It's also anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant. It's good for the moisture barrier. And it can also help to uh, reduce or improve upon skin glycation, which leads to skin yellowing or sallow skin. Honestly, anytime I see a product advertised as vitamin C, I automatically am assuming if I flip it over, there's going to be niacinamide on there somewhere. And boom, there we go. However, some of you guys don't tolerate niacinamide. So there's that as well. While it's a great ingredient, it doesn't work for everyone. This particular product has no ceramides. Overall, this is a good product, however, to consider if you want a lotion that aims to brighten skin tone, maybe help with evening out discoloration, as well as imparting lasting hydration to the skin and offering some moderate exfoliation. It's one you could even try using on your face, although I do still suggest doing a little patch test just to make sure that you tolerate it okay on the face if that's something you want to try. And finally, we have Amlactin's Calm and Renew. Now, this one is interesting because in contrast to most Amlactin products, this actually has lactic acid, not ammonium lactate. It's meant to be gentler and it's meant to be soothing. It uses 2% lactic acid. So on the lower side, the lactic acid in this product is working mostly as a humectant, helping to improve water content in the skin. This lotion also contains ginger root extract, which is anti-inflammatory and may be soothing to the skin. But I really want to mention the texture on this one because, oh my gosh, is it ever one that goes on streaky? It almost foams up a bit. It's very unfortunate, we'll say, in how it applies to the skin. It takes some time for it to sink in and to absorb down. 2% is generally fine for children to use, less likely to sting. That being said, the weird textural application of this, the streakiness, I think a child would not like this. Children can be pickier when it comes to the sensory experience because they're just more sensitive sometimes. And especially if you have a child with eczema, you already know the battle around the bathing routine, how it can be a huge source of stress for you and the child. And both of you kind of feed off of your stress. And that stress actually can make the eczema much worse. One big trigger of this whole stress in the eczema management is either a moisturizer that feels greasy, feels sticky, feels weird, feels gross, stings, burns, smells funny. So, you know, I just don't think a child would care for this for all of those reasons. <laughs> Maybe your child is fine with it and likes it, in which case, great. There's no niacinamide in this. There are no ceramides in this. Now that we've gone over all these, which one should you choose? If you're sensitive or new to AHAs, you're really just kind of looking to improve hydration, get some gentle turnover to improve skin smoothness, go with the 5% Daily Nourish. If you want something that is brightening and offers some moderate exfoliation, go with the vitamin 
vitamin C lotion. If you have keratosis pilaris, rough and bumpy skin, or just rough skin texture, the 12% and lactin daily nourish, it's a great choice. If you have sun damage, crepey skin, you want something anti-aging that may help lessen wrinkle depth, go with either the 12% and lactin daily nourish without ceramides or the 15% intensive healing lotion with ceramides. If you're sensitive to niacinamide, avoid the daily nourish 5% and the vitamin C lotion. If you have really thick lichenified dry rough skin texture, especially like on the elbows and knees, you might want to go for the 15% intensive healing lotion, which is on the higher end for the lactic acid coupled with the barrier support from the ceramides. If you want something that is soothing, that is the least likely of any of these to sting and you don't mind the quirky texture, then go with the Calm and Renew. But a few quick safety, we'll say, reminders. Don't apply these immediately after shaving because they're more likely to burn and sting. Before using these to the entire face, do a little patch test to make sure you tolerate them. And of course, always wear sunscreen, protect your skin from the sun, especially when you are using ammonium lactate, aka lactic acid, aka an alpha hydroxy acid, which can increase your susceptibility to a sunburn. All right, guys, so that is a full rundown with regards to the different amlactin lotions. I really hope this video was useful to you because so often your dermatologist might tell you, oh, you've got that condition, get yourself a bottle of amlactin. And you're like, uh, okay, which one? Sometimes the derm doesn't even realize probably that four new versions of amlactin have been launched since they started recommending it. Maybe they're not necessarily up to date on all of the different versions. That can happen quite quickly because brands are always turning over portfolios, changing things, reformulating things, coming out with new things. I mean, like I said, amlactin does not escape the vitamin C pressures. Let me know in the comments though, which amlactin lotion is your preference? Do you have one that is a holy grail? Have you noticed a huge difference in the different formulations? Um, if you say no, then I'm questioning if you tried Calm and Renew. I hope you guys found this video informative and useful. On the end slide, I'm gonna put yesterday's video with regards to the skin barrier for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, I'm so confused about all of that gibberish. Hopefully that helps clarify things. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.